Learning to become. Learning to learn. Learning to thrive. Learning to flourish. Learning to care. It is now time to listen to our voices. To prepare a better future. Treat others and the planet as you would wish to be treated. Collaborating and developing partnership. We have the capacity to understand, to take action, to take care of ourselves, others, and the planet. And we want to invite you to really work together and collaborate so that we can have an impact now. Welcome, Welcome to, to Learning Planet Festival. It can just get better. Hello to you all. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome you to this special session today as part of the Learning Planet Festival to celebrate some inspiring movements to support youth across the world. My name's Ed Stevenets. I'm part of the Learning Planet team to welcome you here today. And I'm really, we're so glad and honoured to be joined by eight incredible youth organisations with speakers from the USA, Brazil, France, India, Russia, Vietnam, the Netherlands, Kenya, Morocco. Uh, it's with really great, huge pleasure to be joined as well by Stefania Giannini, the Assistant Director General for Education at UNESCO and Francois Tadi, the co-founder and Chief Exploration Officer at the CRI Paris. I just invite first Stefania to share just a, a few words to express your excitement and what you're looking forward to learning from uh, the session today held on the International Day of Education. Over to you, Stefania. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ed. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. I think we have the globe in this room, in this virtual room. Uh, and thanks for, to our dear friends from Learning Planet and Francois, especially for organizing this, uh, this uh, very exciting special session with uh, youth organizations today. Well, just a few words to, to recall that uh, it's a very kind of special international day this year. Uh, we are in Paris, uh, talking from Paris, uh, myself and Francois. Uh, it's a snowing day, but it's not si simply because of that. It's because uh, this international day this year takes place uh, uh, in the wake of uh, the, you know, uh, largest, uh, hugest uh, educational in disruption uh, within this COVID-19 pandemic, as you know, schools closure uh, all over the world has been uh, uh, decided by governments as, uh, you know, necessary sometimes, or in any case, uh, uh, you know, uh, very, very hard uh, decision, political decision. And we never realized like this year, the importance of education uh, from pre-primary to university level and uh, schools, universities as, uh, let me say, not simply and crucially uh, places where we learn, we teach, but also places where we stay together, we, we share our vision uh, of the world, we share our values, uh, and the more schools will be closed and the, the worse will be for uh, the entire young people and children community. So I think we are here to valorize uh, our, our uh, youth organization's work. And I think it's really the right time, the right place to be, to empower education, especially this year. So this is UNESCO vision, happy to be on board. Fantastic. Over to you, Matt. Thank you so much, Stefania. And uh, I challenge Francois in a minute. Can you share your passion, your excitement uh, for this session today? I'm, I'm so glad that there is so many uh, young, energetic uh, person uh, in this uh, conference today. Uh, you know, we launched the, the Learning Planets Festival. The first event was with Stefania and Audrey Azoulay in UNESCO headquarters last year. Uh, there were a few hundreds of people in the room. Uh, today, there is hundreds of organizations joining the movement. And it's so great to see, you know, so many energy uh, and so many uh, nice, uh, smiling people uh, around this table and, and across the Learning Planet events uh, that are happening uh, these very days as we speak. And I think that, you know, uh, the, the whole perspective of the Learning Planet is that we can learn so much faster if we learn from each other and if we can learn from one country to the next and the diversity of countries that is presented here the diversity of projects if you know the various projects that you carry were to um, get integrated uh, i think they would be even more powerful and so the the beauty of you know 
I think all of you here is that, you know, we can learn from you, but, you know, you can probably also learn from each other and we can uh, maybe get the whole world to know about what you do and, and, and to learn faster. Uh, how do we face challenges? How do we face personal challenges, collective challenges, global challenges? How do we care for oneself, others and the planet? That's really what we want to learn from you. Thank you for being here. A perfect one minute, Francois. Thank you. Uh... Wonderful. So the session today will fly by. We've got lots of organizations joining us uh, and each will be sharing briefly about their excellent initiatives. Uh, this will be intersected between some conversation with Francois and Stefania. Uh, so do not hesitate uh, to share any comments and questions in the chat. Uh, we're really glad as well to assure you that for those available immediately after this uh, conversation, you can join the Ashoka Young Changemakers who are hosting even more uh, incredible youth and youth initiatives. Uh, so if you just go directly below this session on the Attendify chat, uh, you should find it well. And we also invite you, you'll see in the resources section of the uh, platform, there is a uh, guide to all of the youth organizations, not just here, but also participating in the festival. So without further ado, it gives me really great pleasure to head to the Netherlands and our first organization, Designathon Works, represented by their founder, Ima Vima, and their youth member, Moses. Over to you. Sorry, unmute. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Um, will you share the slides? Uh, um, or are they being shown? Okay, great. So I'm just going to sketch very quickly what our organization does, and then I'm going to hand over uh, the word to Moses. So uh, next slide. The work that we do at uh, Designathon is all about the question, how can we empower young people to design a better world? And what then would the future look like if they got that opportunity. Next slide. Um, and I'm talking about all children, all socioeconomic backgrounds, regardless of ability, uh, culture, uh, all children uh, should be given this opportunity. Um, to date, we've worked with 90,000 children. Um, we work in the Netherlands, in France, in uh, Belgium, but also in Nepal, Mexico and Tanzania. And um, yesterday, for example, we had our global event. We had 22 countries taking part uh, despite COVID, uh, working on the SDG uh, number seven uh, on clean energy. Uh, next slide. The method that we have is a combination of design thinking and maker education. And the learning objectives are actually mapped to the learning objectives of UNESCO's own SDG learning objectives. Um, and I'm glad that the research that we've done also bears out that the children's uh, agency and feeling of influencing the world does indeed grow through this methodology. Uh, next slide. Um, here um, are some examples of what the children make. It's absolutely amazing. Every single time the children come up with something and people are surprised and amazed. Um, and then lastly, to explain as part of our method, we want uh, policymakers to hear what the children have come up with. Um, okay, I need to hurry up and give the word to Moses because we really want to hear from him. Uh, he will also be presenting his idea next week to the municipality in Amsterdam. So Moses, please talk to us. Hello, I'm Moses. Um, the problem we were working on is global warming and the environment. We wanted to invent something that works with nature instead of using it up. Um, uh, there is a lot of rain in Holland and with this plan we can enjoy it instead of wasting it, wasting it. We have a little animation to show how it's worked. Can you guys play the an uh, Moses animation? So 
just let us know when the animation's finished and then Moses will say something else. Um, I would like to see people use this in their houses, in the cities and in the sewers. So he would like to see it also in the sewerage system uh, so that this could be applied yeah, in houses and across the city. Uh, that's it from us. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And I can assure you, Moses, that everyone got to see the animation on the, uh, on the Identify, even if you didn't see it yourself. Uh, thank you so much to both of you. Uh, and now we pass from the Netherlands to Kenya, uh, where I'm delighted to be joined by the Youth Cafe and its president, Willis Onyango, alongside Shoemaker Thingyengenge, to hear more about their goal to advance youth-led approaches towards sustainable development, social equity, de democratic governance, and much more. So I give the floor to Willis to begin. Thank you so much, uh, Ed and uh, <coughs> Francois. It's a pleasure and a honor to be able to join this distinguished uh, panel and to be able to share our experiences on education and skill building among youngsters in Africa. We are a youth uh, serving and youth led organization based in Kenya and uh, reaching over cumulat cumulatively 22 countries uh, in Africa and beyond. We are founded in the year 2012. Um, um, with a theory of change that uh, is centered on empowering of young people. Since uh, our founding, we've, we've so far reached over 1.6 million young men and women with, with our programming and attracted media partners such as Google, uh, MasterCard Foundation, and most recently USA. Most of our, most, if not all of our staff are predominantly between the ages of uh, 18 and 35. So we are really at the center of putting uh, the driving force of the next development agenda in the hands of uh, African youth. Um, our vision is to uh, inculcate uh, a future uh, that is lasting, that is fair, and that is centered on uh, young people's role in sustainable development. In education and, and, and skill building, we've been at the forefront uh, more recently under the present circumstances of COVID-19. We've worked on a program to advance youth-led approaches towards uh, COVID-19 as a solution-oriented project. And our education pillar of work worked with the learners and educators to document and also to give them safe spaces to express their fears and concerns under the present circumstances. Key issues that emerged were around mental health, uh, inability to use uh, and, and access virtual platforms for learning, as well as um, uh, the job losses by their parents and guardians, which meant that they could no longer uh, uh, adequately attend school. We've also work, uh, worked with Give Directly to administer cash for uh, cash transfer program uh, for youngsters uh, from drawn from informal settlements, and cumulatively, we are honored to say that over half a million US dollars was, was distributed to our members who are residing in Nairobi Islam as part of our relief uh, 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 program. I'll now hand over to my colleague Shumeda, who will take you through our other broader strands of work. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Willis. My name is Shumeda Fenyengeni. Shumeda, are you still there? Um, if Shumeda is not there, Shumeda is joining from Rwanda. Um, if she will be able to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to join, she will get. But I can uh, just uh, continue in the interest of time. Thank you, Willis. Um, yeah, we we work around eight thematic uh, areas, and one being uh, the education and skills. And we are also honoured that UNESCO is uh, uh, is ably represented <laughs> by the Assistant Secretary General for Education, because most recently the Youth Cafe won the number one position. Uh, in the 2020 UNESCO Global Award for its work on media um, literacy and education. Uh, and uh, that, is, that, that was a honor and uh, a testament that uh, we can trust 
uh, and, 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 and have confidence in the ability of young people to propose innovative solutions towards our educative challenges we face in the continent. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the conference, we are uh, most particularly um, interested to share um, our work on media literacy, our goals and aspirations uh, to have e uh, affordable and uh, uh, equal uh, opportunities to young people who we see uh, at least proportionately affected in terms of their ability to access education, which, as Nelson Mandela said, is the number one equalizer in the world. Um, we well, if, sorry, just yeah. to pause you a second, and I think it's a wonderful quote possibly to end you on. I'm, I'm just going to have to cut you there so we can pass directly to the next uh, organization. But thank you so much. And hopefully we can get Shumada back with us by the end to share a few words as well. Um, Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, we're just going to pass over to uh, Ding Long Pham to hear now about the largest youth social entrepreneurship movement in Asia and the Pacific. Uh, so Ding Long, over to you to share more about Youth Collabs and your work. Thank you so much, Ed, and for the teasing for everyone. So hello, everyone. It's an honor to be here and share what we do, and but also to learn from everyone else. Um, so my name is Dean Long, it's a Vietnamese name. I was born and raised in Paris, uh, but right now I'm in Cambodia. Uh, glad to hear that it's snowing in Paris. Uh, it's still around 30 degrees here. But anyway, um, so I work for UNDP uh, in Asia Pacific, and I wanted to share with you uh, the project where I'm working uh, right now, which is called Youth Collab, where just in short, uh, we work with young people around Asia Pacific to support them to address the sustainable development goals, whether it's through social entrepreneurship, youth leadership, innovation, pretty much anything as long as it has good social impact or environmental impact. And I think in general, what we want to do is to really support young people at each phase of their change making journey. If we speak about social entrepreneurship, I think people are quite aware of the entrepreneurship journey. It's like, you know, you research an issue, you start to ideate, you do a prototype, you iterate, etc. you grow, etc., etc., etc. And we try to adopt this methodology, so to speak, as well for young people who want to have an impact, but don't necessarily want to become social entrepreneurs, uh, because there's so many ways you can have an impact, right? And I think the way we approach it on for, for this kind of profile, uh, for the youth leader, youth community builders, youth facilitator, is how can we help them step by step to become a youth leader, to become a youth community builder? Because it's, you know, it's skills that you need to learn, it's skills that, uh, well, you don't know how to start it. It, quite, it can be quite complicated. And also how to do that at scale uh, and do that by having the lens of leaving no one behind. So working and focusing on you know, uh, marginalized and more uh, vulnerable communities. So that's what we came up with a, pro a program called Movers Program, where basically we aim to train uh, at scale uh, young people to become facilitators and community builders. And concretely, it's sort of a training of trainer model uh, where we have a lot of different trainings. I can come back on that if I have time later uh, about SDGs, about pretty much everything, but around 21st century skills. So IT literacy, uh, global citizenship and soft skills. And what we aim for the young people who join the program is really to go beyond being a participant, but to participate and then become the trainer. Because what we really want to, to do is for young people to have this mindset of, okay, uh, actually I'm the one who's able to empower my peers. I'm the one who's able to help other young people reconnect with their own power of action because we all have it. It's a matter of how can you unleash this potential, right? So it's really about, yeah, like having this entrepreneurial mindset, this, okay, uh, I'm the youth, I'm not only a participant, I'm the one who can inspire my friends and my community. Um, Sorry, just so that I, I think my time is up, but uh, yes, feel free to check out what we are doing. Uh, I will just leave the website in the chat and thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Ding Long. Um, wonderful, such a brilliant first set of stories, of presentations, of actions. Uh, just to pass it over to you first, Francois, before you can then 
um, pass on the, the baton to Stefania. Uh, what are your takeaways and, and inspirations from these first few talks? Unmuting. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm glad that uh, we see already so much energy, you know, different parts of the world, uh, that same energy in uh, everywhere. And, and every time, you know, the will to contribute to a sustainable future, uh, to learn to do things and not only to learn, but, you know, to uh, start teaching and training others and starting movements. And I think that's, that's uh, absolutely key because I think, you know, for change to happen at scale, we have to have that sort of autocatalytic properties where, you know, uh, what is done somewhere gives um, a, an inspiration for others to do even more. Uh, and that's, you know, in order to uh, face the global challenges we have, I think we need all sorts of little bricks, but we also need to be able to share those bricks and reassemble them. And, you know, the ability, for instance, uh, of Moses to uh, make nice little video uh, to describe what he does so that it can inspire others or uh, what we just heard from Dean Long, the ability to train the trainers. I think they're all um, means of making not only nice things, but things that can scale and things that can be shared. Uh, the Youth Cafe is in the same uh, spirit uh, of you know, mobilizing ever more uh, communities and engaging uh, progressively uh, people to come together and do things that you, know, you could not do alone. So I'm, I'm really glad and you know, I don't want to be uh, too long and I'll, I'll pass it to, to Stefania. I, you know, we're here to listen to you rather than, you know, give long speeches. Yes, exactly, Francois. Thank you very much for giving the floor. Well, I'm impressed by some key words. Let me say it like this, uh, language matters and behind language you use, uh, there is a vision, right? Uh, and we can try to, to see how uh, these models are working. Uh, and some word that I, I heard the, today in this, uh, in this virtual room are about design thinking, are about uh, um, giving solutions. That means being very much uh, results and, folk and contest oriented. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, uh, the youth cafe in Kenya, but I think it's the same in the Netherlands uh, through the nice, uh, animation uh, which uh, Moses uh, showcased uh, and then the impact uh, what you said the Dean Long at the end uh, you know you're, you're supporting young people who uh, definitely want to have a, an impact not necessarily being uh, uh, you know trainers themselves uh, themselves or uh, you know uh, being part of this job of SDGs but taking uh, SDGs as a framework, as a, as a reference of what they are doing. So I think that uh, we are a bit building together the vocabulary we need in this century. And uh, it's great to see uh, young people uh, being not simply observers of something we are doing or, you know, uh, professors, teachers teaching about, but being uh, main actors of the process itself. So the last word I heard, but which is the first, it's about empowerment. And everything we are discussing here is about empowerment, definitely. So great, thank you. Over to you, Ed. Really wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, uh, really wonderful words. Um, we now move on to France and we welcome the founding pres president of Electe en Herbe, Corinne Van Arroy, to share more about their program to really transform citizenship education for youth. Um, so, Colleen, uh, I give the floor to you. Thank you, Ed, and thanks uh, to you all to give us uh, the opportunity to introduce uh, our action. Uh, so, I'm Colleen. Um, I, I am the co-founder of Elector on Herb that we can translate uh, as voters in training in English. And uh, in two words, voters in training develops participation uh, education programs for young people aged 11 to 18, uh, and based on participatory and fun activities. Um, we created um, Electoral Nerd in France five years ago with uh, young teachers and young education activists to fight against abstention, uh, but also to give young people the opportunity to get involved in projects uh, within their schools. And I would like to introduce uh, our latest uh, program, Parti Présent, Present participle, I'm frankly not sure about uh, this translation, but anyway, uh, this is a program which aims to concretely uh, involve young people in the fight against global warming, starting with actions 
that can be implemented at the scales of their own school. And to create a program, uh, we took our uh, uh, inspiration uh, from the democratic experimentation of the French Citizens' Convention for Climate, uh, which brought together 150 randomly selected citizens. And for several months, these citizens heard different expert opinions and worked together to formulate propositions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in France. And those propositions were then presented uh, to the French president. And uh, well, we thought it would be uh, very interesting to provide uh, young people and their teachers with uh, dedicated tools to uh, enable them to organize the same kind of project, but at school level. Uh, that is to say, uh, small scale conventions for the climate. Of course, uh, the methodology needed to be adapted to the school environment and its uh, specificities, uh, but the ambition was the same. Uh, to have the young people work together, deliberate together over a long period of time uh, so that they could analyze the current situation, uh, hear from uh, the school staff or external experts about uh, global warming issues, get into the technicality of certain issues too, and then come up with propositions for, for practical actions to be implemented in their school in order, of course, to improve uh, sustainability. Uh, for example, uh, it can be actions related to um, well, I don't know, energy consumption or biodiver biodiversity protection or um, waste management within the school, etc. So this is the first part of the, of the program. But also we had this idea that the program needed some kind of highlight that would involve the whole school, not only the students participating in the convention. Uh, so we included uh, the organization of a referendum at school level, meaning all students and uh, staff uh, would vote on the propositions formulated by the members of the convention. And uh, to us, it is an important uh, part of the program because uh, uh, it also allows young people to be introduced to voting. And uh, concretely, uh, to help young people and their teachers um, take up this project, we produced a, a ready-to-use guide that allows them to organize step-by-step -step their own school convention and referendum. And uh, this guide, like all resources produced by voters in trainings, uh, is available uh, free of charge, of course, uh, on our website, uh, but also, uh, and most importantly, on their Creative Commons license, uh, so that anyone can share it, adapt it, and uh, improve it as well. And to finish, um, I would like to say, despite a difficult context for the schools, uh, several pilot experiments are being carried out this year. And we are not surprised because we know the young people are really committed in a lot of things, especially the fight against uh, global warming. But we are impressed and, um, and uh, of course, we look forward to hearing what the young people have to say and the practical changes they will have initiated. So thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Colleen. Um, we now pass over to the USA and to Sanjidi, the Director of Design for Change USA and their Global Student Council member, Justin, as they share Design for Change's work and goals for building 21st century skills in young people. So I pass it over to you first, Sanjidi. Fantastic, and thank you so much for this opportunity. Love meeting you all in the shared work. Um, my name is Sanjali Gidwani. I'm the Director of Design for Change USA. We're part of a larger global movement called Design for Change World. We're in about 70 countries, serving over 2 million children, equipping and empowering them around the global goals to create meaningful changes, but within their own context. And the way that we do that is through a very simple design thinking methodology uh, that we have pioneered alongside um, educational institutions like Harvard and Stanford um, and IDO, which is a really incredible design form, just to simplify the design process into four basic steps, feel, imagine, do, share, to help young people journey through the process of creating change. And through that process, learning those critical thinking skills, learning how to build empathy and creating change immediately in their own schools, in their own context. So you're gonna hear Justin talk about that in just a minute. Um, and then we host a wonderful global conference every year, Pre-pandemic, it was in a different country every year, so we've actually been to many of the countries um, that you all represent. Um, and we hope to reconvene um, that gathering, hopefully this year, fingers crossed. Um, and Justin will be speaking about his experience at our global conference that draws 
fused together from all over the world to share their stories of change. Um, but the number one thing that we believe through Design for Change is that keep everything very simple, um, which is the reason that Design for Change has spread so quickly around the world. But the transformation for students has to start with their self before they start to transform their own communities. And that's something that um, we believe is absolutely necessary in order to show empathy, you must develop empathy inside yourself. So with further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Justin who has so much, many more interesting things to say than I do. So I'd love for you to hear about his experience. Hi everyone, my name is Justin Victor. And when I first learned about Design for Change, I was in fifth grade and me and my classmates was working on a Stop the Spread campaign. This campaign, we made this campaign because during the time we had a horrible flu season and we all like had experience with having the flu. So our teacher introduced us to Design for Change and their fail, imagine, do, share method. So she encouraged us to use this method with our project. And that was very influential to our success with this project. And like, like with every step, we took it one step at a time. So with the feel, our feel was that we all experienced it and we know how like how bad the flu was. So, and then our imagine was basically brainstorming and getting on the ideas on what we can do and how we could spread our message. And after we did our brainstorming, we would do it. And once we would do the project and then we would share it. And after we done all those steps, Design for Change invited us to go to Taiwan and spread our message throughout the globe, which is a, an amazing opportunity for all of us. I was extremely nervous, but as I went there and you got to learn most of the people, they was very kind and welcoming and always encouraged us, even especially when we was really nervous. And that just relieved a lot of stress off of us, especially since we was very young, we was about 10 years old. And we've been staying in contact with them for years now going into high school soon. And they invited us the next year to go to Rome and we even got to meet the Pope and the mayor of Rome. And it was just an amazing um, just experience because they really taught me a lot not only with just with design for change, but something that you could just use a lot in life to teach you that you could do anything and don't let like your nerves just stop you from doing it. And I just learned a lot from that experience and design for change. I just encourage you guys to use that feel, imagine, do share method because it is very useful and helpful. And that's basically all I got to say. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Justin. And you can hear more about the Design for Change methodology by students of one of the connected schools, Riverside uh, in India, who tomorrow at 10.30 uh, a.m. Central European time will give, be giving a workshop where they will take you through this, uh, this VIDS methodology. So I'd really encourage that you, uh, you take a moment to explore that tomorrow morning. Um, really, really, really great to hear. Uh, on to now both South Asia and Brazil for the Ashoka Young Changemakers and Shruti Nair first, Director of the Youth Years programs with Ashoka Young Changemakers and Madria and Ashoka Young Changemakers supporting marginalised people through spoken poetry and more uh, in Brazil. So I pass it over first to Shruti to share more about your incredible work. Thank you, Ed. Um, so uh, I'm very excited to be here. I'm Shruti, I lead Ashoka's youth program program in South Asia. Um, and, and like I mentioned, we search, select, and build a community of teen change makers and work with institutional partners to help society reimagine a world where every young person can go practicing to be a change maker. And you'll meet one very such inspiring Ashoka Young Change Maker Matria today right after me and hear her story. Um, over the last decade, we have uh, all seen the power of our young people globally in bringing change and in solving critical problems and challenges in their communities. Um, and at Ashoka, what we have learned in our work with social entrepreneurs, uh, who we call Ashoka Fellows in the last 40 years, is that we need to unleash the innate power in everyone and transform the world from where only a few lead to a world where everyone leads. Um, and we believe that that would be in everyone a change maker world. And as many of you may already know, Ashoka is one of the largest networks of social entrepreneurs in the world. Um, and majority of our Ashoka fellows started through their teen years, which is between the age of 12 and 20. And with this realization, we started identifying and supporting inspiring teen change makers as Ashoka young change makers who are working towards solving a problem. Um, with this growing and powerful community, we are creating a new type of role model for our young people who have the potential to impact an entire generation. And these, they are our community of co-leaders in building this everyone a change maker world. 
Um, and as we come together to reimagine education, learning and supporting our young people towards a more sustainable future, I'm very excited with this opportunity that it gives us to make each young person know they are change makers and they, they, they should work on their ability to change their reality. And once young people see themselves as change makers, they inspire and give others this great gift, which is giving people the power to give. And uh, with that, the world will be on a very different path. So on that note, I would pass it over to Nidria to share her amazing work and journey with us. Nidria, over to you. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thanks, Ruchi. Thanks for the festival organization. Um, so I'm Nidria, um, 21 years old. I'm a Brazilian poet, a social studies student in the University of Sao Paulo. And I was recognized as an Ashoka Young Changemaker in 2019. Um, my initiative is related to Poetry Slam. So uh, in 2018, for the first time, the university in which I study started to uh, accept uh, this program of a reserve of places for Black and Indigenous people. And me and my friends were thinking about the possibility of making a more receptive welcoming to those people. So we use it poetry design competition, which is something that is already very, um, very like on hype in the whole city. And we brought it to university. And what happened was that not only people who were getting into university as students felt welcome inside that space, but also people who usually were not going to university started to understand that there was a public university and that you could go there and watch classes and actually share art, culture and thoughts about the reality. So in hands, uh, that's how I currently working with my friends. And what I have to take from this experience and that could perhaps inspire other young people is that you might always start with something that is close to your own reality. So the thing is, we wanted to have those people around us feeling more welcoming um, inside that space. And also we wanted to share more of the experiences and more of the thoughts that are usually not accepted uh, inside that space. And it's not only about our bodies as Black, Indigenous, queer, or people with disabilities inside that space. It's also about the way that we see and the way that we project the work. So the Poetry Slam competition pretty much opens up space to that. And you might do that not only through a Poetry Slam competition, but with anything else. So I think that it's super important that you try to understand what is the matter inside your own community and try to understand the possible solutions, uh, looking always for the good of all and understanding that that can only bring benefit to all of us. So that would be my takeaway from all of that. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, wonderful, Midria. Um, we will, of course, as I said at the start of the chat, be sharing a link just now to the uh, session hosted by Ashoka Young Changemakers just after this call at uh, four o'clock Central European time, where you can hear more from Midria and some really incredible uh, youth who are making some, taking change into their own hands and making some really incredible impact uh, worldwide. Um, so we now move to Russia and to the Kruzok movement and really glad to welcome their president Alexei Fedeseviev and their member as well Elizaveta Avdinko, Avdinko to share about collaboration within their children and adult communities to create really the technological and social patterns of the future. So Alexei, I give the floor to you. Thank you very much. Um, could you please show the presentation and uh, I want to present you the organization Kruzok Association and the movement of young people who are engaged and empowered to make their projects, uh, technological projects and social projects, uh, which are pretend to change the world and play with the possible uh, versions of future. Um, the second slide, uh, please. And uh, what is the Kruzok uh, movement? What is the community? Uh, uh, we started uh, more than uh, six years ago and now we have pretty big community of uh, young people and adults and uh, we run uh, very different formats and uh, events uh, which allows young people to try something and to play with technologies to run their own project to find experts and find problems to solve and uh, together with uh, 
other communities like makers and uh, science uh, communities and uh, engineering communities uh, young people uh, build their own solutions uh, at the intersections between uh, entrepreneurship and uh, technologies and uh, social problems uh, the next slide please uh, i would say that uh, this um, uh, communities are pretty similar to uh, uh, ecosystems, life ecosystems, like mycelium uh, of mushrooms, uh, when uh, different parts of the forest are connected with uh, very uh, different types of signals and ex exchanges of power, power and energy. And uh, we uh, try to find uh, different communities of uh, this type and uh, we run international uh, researches like Almanach of uh, Future Practices, uh, which uh, try to find and um, describe the available uh, communities uh, around the globe. And the last slide, please. Um, what are uh, the biggest uh, problems for us with the COVID year uh, we had? Actually, the communities are strong enough to fight with these uh, diseases. And uh, the main problem is that we still do not um, uh, see uh, the interest of uh, big stakeholders like governments and corporations in this engaging young people in solving uh, real problems. And that's uh, the, the thing that COVID can change, I think. Uh, I would like to give a talk to uh, Elizabeth, who is uh, who presents our alumni. Uh, she was uh, for several years with us, and I think that she will uh, tell more about how it looks like from inside. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Liza, and I'm a physics student. My dream is uh, to connect science and science fiction to polarize these two directions, and in the Kruzhok moment, I can do it perfectly. So, uh, what is the Kruzhok moment for me? Firstly, it's a community where I can find really enthusiastic people, children and adults, that coexist here harmoniously using the passion of one generation and the experience of another. Secondly, these are projects. They are the engine for moments. The Rukami Festival and other venues uh, help you not only walk through them, but also share them. Thirdly, it's a uh, really moment into the future. Uh, we talk about what awaits us in the Fire Club, uh, solve future problems at the Internet Olympian, and uh, it's uh, only a small part. So the future is important to us. We want to live in it, uh, we want to see it comfortable and inspiring, not intimidating. Uh, the Kruzhok moment is my ticket to the future, uh, because we are not just breathing it closer. Together with us, the future is already here. So uh, thanks for attention, and it's fantastic to talk with such inspired people here. Uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, it's all. Thank you so much. Uh, really fantastic. Finally, we now give the floor, uh, lastly, to Zineb Ruhi, who can share more about the Youth by Youth initiative to support educational act activists of the future. So over to you, Zineb. Thank you. What if young people designed the future of education? Starting this Friday and over the weekend, we had 140 activists aged 15 to 25 and coming from across 50 countries who gathered to discuss this question. On the first day, they discussed the what is of education from its history to its innovations. Yesterday, we went on a radical reimagination journey, exploring what if and creating new visions for what now and what steps to take to make our visions a reality. With Youth by Youth, uh, we aim to accelerate the process of young people influencing, designing and transforming their learning experiences and their education systems. We start with what is because we think the first step when talking about changing education is understanding and agreeing on a new purpose for education. Our purpose as individuals and as societies is our flourishing, our well-being and the full exploration and expansion of our potential. But as it stands, it is not the purpose of schooling. Schooling's main purpose is to supply the economy with the next generation of workers in order to, solve, to, to serve our global goal of perpetual growth. 
which we know is causing the collapse of our climate systems and threatening the very future of our youth. For so many of them, COVID-19 has opened their eyes to the climate crisis, to racial justice, to dramatic national and global inequalities. They are feeling real existential dread and they're starting to awaken to the fact that in the face of potential civilizational collapse, they're being asked to study hard in order to get a good job and compete with one another for a seat at the top of a crumbling structure. The absurdity of the situation is not lost on them. More and more are wanting their education to change in fundamental and transformational ways, not to improve little bit by little bit. But young people think that if they wait for their governments, it will never happen. They are conscious that schooling is not working for a majority of them, whether they're privileged or not, whether they live in Zambia or in the USA. For instance, one of our trained youth hosts of our group of 20 exceptional young people who co-create Youth by Youth with us and facilitate uh, daily small group dialogues told us that before this experience, he thought his country of Nigeria was the only one that was this bad and just realized the extent to which the problems in education are truly global. For young people, and to be very frank in my experience as well, schooling feels like it is disconnecting us from our creativity, from our interests, from our natural curiosity, from our cultures and from our places. And that has been the case for a while. But fortunately, this unique time of disruption is opening a window for the transformational agenda of education to be possible. A transformational agenda that I think lies at the heart of a necessary planet transition if we are to have a viable future for generations to come. The reason we started Youth by Youth is because we believe that the only way we can transform our education at scale, globally, and rapidly enough is through a youth-led, adult-supported revolution of our education. This starts with a personal reclaiming of our education. And by that, I mean reclaiming our agency over our time, our attention, and our energy to start to focus a lot more on who we want to become and who we need to become. We believe young people should have agency over their education and that their human rights are being violated routinely. The United Nations Conventions on the Rights of the Child, the UNCRC, which is the most widely ratified human rights treaty in history, clearly states in Article 11 and 12 that children have the right to be heard and should be considered in policymaking regarding their education. This is clearly not a reality in most places. This is why at the closing of the Y by Y in, that we're gonna have in a few hours, we will be launching a global petition. We ask for every education ministry to be in consultation with representative youth councils that are given real decision-making power. We ask for education policies to be systematically approved by young people prior to being implemented and for youth councils to inform and lead solutions to school challenges intensified by COVID-19, including widening systemic inequality and declining youth mental health. And finally, we ask for, for schools to stop having the monopoly over education by recognizing out-of-school experiences as integral to our education, from online classes to time in nature. We hope to be able to share this petition with you, Stefania, and with UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. And we hope many of you can join us. Young people need to know that they have adults and advocates by their sides. And adults need to share with them better information, knowledge, and most importantly, wisdom. We are in this together and we're welcoming all voices that feel a sense of alignment with this message to collaborate, to co-create, and to start this journey of global education transformation and planetary transition together. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sineb, for this inspiring call to action. Uh, before we finish, I would love to give the floor uh, to the real youth that we have uh, in the call today to share more about how they feel we can support other young people to really take and, and be inspired by their actions as well. Um, but before we do so, I give the ambitious task to uh, Francois and then Stefania to synthesize some of the incredible uh, words and actions that we've just heard uh, over the past five uh, presentations. So Francois, to begin with you first, uh, what, what has inspired you and what do you take from, from what we have just heard from, from such incredibly uh, inspiring and active organizations. I'm, I'm quite amazed uh, by the, the quality and diversity of what we've heard, uh, but also uh, the complementarity of what we've heard. 
And I, I can't help thinking, you know, what would happen if all those initiatives were available to a given young person, actually to every young person uh, on the planet, okay? So what if you could, you know, learn to design your own initiatives in Design for Change, uh, and then learn to use the technology uh, like you, you're, you're doing in Russia, uh, and learn to, you know, be empowered and become a young change maker and be able to tell your own story uh, in poetry, uh, like we've heard from Ashoka, young change maker. And, you know, what if you could co-design with your friends, you know, the next stage of, of your education, like in use by use? And what if you could start voting on, you know, the future of education, like we've heard in Electeur en Herbe and, you know, this, this young uh, voters movement? You know, what if all those, um, uh, fantastic bricks of innovation were to be assembled uh, to be able to, you know, take uh, education to the next stage. Uh, what if, you know, a new generation was educated by benefiting from all of this? And, and you know, one of the person asking on the chat was asking, you know, uh, is there a place to um, have all those beautiful innovations? And, you know, if it doesn't exist, you know, the Learning Planets is definitely one of the places where we'd be very happy to uh, invite you to share what you do, uh, celebrate it and, and document it and, and allow others uh, in this open source spirit to start using it to take it um, to the next stage. And I think that indeed, you know, there were other sessions uh, this morning on, you know, what if you could ask for new rights? And that's, you know, more or less what we heard from Zineb. You know, one right could be, you know, I want to write my own uh, education curriculum. Uh, but there might be new rights uh, that we've heard also this morning, like, you know, I want uh, a decent climate. I want a clean air. I want, you know, beautiful nature uh, to still be alive when my children uh, would be uh, themselves uh, born and, and become young adults and so on. And so I think it's, it's, a, it's a movement that is just um, appearing in various places around the world. And the question for me is, you know, some of your programs have already impacted millions and I'm quite impressed by the people that, you know, I've done this and I, I happen to know uh, some of them and I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I can appreciate the, the quality of what they've done. But what we do know is that we have to care for billions uh, of children. So the basic question is, you know, how do we scale uh, those wonderful programs from million to billions? Um, and, you know, how do we uh, create the ecosystem where these things can spread uh, at least as fast as, as a virus, you know. Uh, we've heard from, from the Design for Change uh, founder this morning, uh, Kiran, that, you know, she wants to spread the ICANN virus, okay? Uh, and, you know, one of the questions we also had on the chat was, you know, uh, what would you say to a young person that feel, you know, powerless? Well, uh, I guess you can try to tell her about the ICANN virus, but, you know, what matters is the WeCAN virus. Uh, and I think, you know, this WeCAN this ability to do collectively things that we cannot do alone is what can uh, really contribute. And in order to uh, face this challenging situation, you know, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, you know, to have the co courage to change what you can change, uh, but, and to have the serenity to accept what you cannot change and the wisdom to distinguish the two. Okay, and already the, the Stoics and, and Marcus Aurelius were thinking like this, but the question is, you know, what we can change alone and what we can change collectively is very different. So I think if you want to be wise uh, and be able to understand what it is that you can really change, you have to learn from others uh, how to work with them and how to together do things that would have been completely impossible um, alone. Like, you know, fixing climate change, none of us can do it alone, but collectively uh, we have a chance of, of making a difference. And that's, I think, what we should aim for. And, um, and so that's the, the sort of things that when I hear you, I feel very uh, hopeful that this becomes possible because then this can be uh, combined with already what we heard before, like the, the Youth Collab and the, 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 the Youth Cafe and the Climate Use. I mean, all those wonderful initiatives and hundreds of others that you know, we could not uh, have in this one session but that are existing around the world. You know, what can we do to uh, help connect people that have uh, similar dreams and similar projects. And actually one of the things that we're trying to do in the Learning Planet is to uh, train artificial intelligence to be at the service of youth intelligence. And imagine if, you know, when you have a project in Nairobi, you could connect to the closest project to yours that is in Brazil or that is in, in Cambodia. And, and that is actually becoming possible 
uh, we are building a sort of a GPS of project and a GPS of dreams to be able to do what uh, John Lennon was dreaming of when he, he was mentioning that, you know, uh, if you, you may be a dreamer, but you're not the only one. And if you can connect to people that share the same dreams, you can start having a chance of making your dreams have a real impact and be able to uh, change the world at scale. Thank you. Uh, and to you, thank you, Francois. To you, Stefania, uh, what did you take away from these uh, thank really you. incredible range and diversity yeah. of presentations? Well, uh, as Francois said, uh, it's about the scaling up uh, to billions, the, the incredible transformative uh, power uh, of your initiatives, uh, what we heard today, but I'm sure, uh, you know, beyond uh, your your uh, faces in this in this room today, there are millions of, of, of people, young people, uh, seeing themselves as game changers, not as observers, as uh, as uh, Shruti mentioned before. So, so to say, uh, Francois, you know very well, uh, this is a bit part of my job description at UNESCO, <laughs> trying to you know to push for scaling up. It's not a, it's not an easy job, you know, but uh, it's really amazing. So I want to conclude uh, with a very concrete proposal about uh, joint UNESCO initiatives, especially this year. I mentioned two of them. One is about. Uh, you know, global warming, climate change, uh, taking care of the planet and other people is one of the main topics that you also, from different angles, uh, touch upon today. And we are very much focusing in the coming months at UNESCO on uh, education for sustainable development and climate change. In order to take this collective responsibility, I think Francois is right when he says, uh, we can change individually and change collectively. So it's about knowledge, awareness, and action slash behaviors. So if we change our own behaviors as individuals, I mean, we can try to contribute to, to raise awareness about the importance of taking care in this century, especially this year, about better and more about the planet, nature, and uh, communities around us, uh, community is another key word I heard. So we'll organize uh, uh, in Berlin, a big event uh, in May about uh, uh, education for sustainable development. Uh, I kindly uh, ask you to join us there. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, uh, you know, send all the, the information and linkages necessary to do that. And then from Berlin, we'll move to Milan, September this year. Uh, you know, the youth movement uh, uh, connected with the HERT initiative uh, uh, will organize a, a youth summit in Milan, in Italy. And then there will be Glasgow COP26, where UNESCO wants absolutely to raise up the issue of the importance of education as one of the component uh, which can contribute mostly to, uh, to share knowledge, awareness, and actions on this topic. Uh, second proposal is about uh, joining UNESCO and Learning Planet uh, initiative starting from tomorrow where we celebrate together the International Day for Education in this very special time unprecedented time because of the COVID-19 and some of you mentioned directly the projects you are, you are contextualizing in this, uh, this COVID-19 era, let me so to say. And uh, as you maybe know, uh, UNESCO established from the beginning of this pandemic, the Global Education Coalition, which is focusing on uh, disruption uh, of education everywhere and trying to find solutions and support to governments as well, education communities. That means teachers as frontline workers and our heroes in the classroom, students uh, and communities around the world. So please have a look to Global Education Coalition on UNESCO website and join us in this huge collective effort to make a bit uh, a better world. I think we can do it together. Thank you very much. Over to you, Ed. Thank you, Stefania, for this call to action. Um, 
just to take a couple of uh, the comments from the chat, there's been some really uh, great comments. So a few talking about how enlightening the Youth by Youth workshops have been. So thank you, Zinev, uh, gaining lots of in insights from our activists. Uh, we also had a question, and we will ask this to the, to the panel, um, people asking, uh, could you share some resources that you would consider valuable? So books, movies, or online pages where we can explore more. So I'll be asking the, the panel to share, to share with us uh, some resources that we will be able to also um, share via our website at the Learning Planet in our resources section, um, which you can explore more after the festival. And um, just before we do finish, I wanted to take one, one very quick question that I'd love to give to uh, Shumaida, who didn't get a chance to hear from, and Moses and Justin, uh, our youngest participants, which was, as someone mentioned, um, how can we actually encourage other young people to uh, actually, who may be scared about the issues that they're facing, to take action? What would be one bit of advice you would give them? So, Shumaida, could you just share with us very briefly one bit of advice? Okay, thank you. I'm sorry for what happened earlier on. So one big advice that I can give to the youth is to, to, to step up and... Um, I think, Shumada, we can't hear you. Sorry, uh, the, the uh, sound is going. They're in slow foundation. Let's go. Yeah. Can you now hear me? I'm afraid I don't think that we can hear you, I'm afraid, Shumada. If you could just mute your, mute your sound for the moment. Uh, it's not coming through, I'm afraid. Um, if I just pass one bit of advice from Justin, maybe for uh, how you would inspire or encourage another young person uh, looking to take action. Um, what I would say to another young person like who's looking to take action is don't let your fears hold you back. Because I feel like that was something that I was going to do, but Design for Change encouraged me and like, they comforted me and like basically led me to success instead of letting my fears hold me back so the main thing i would tell them is one don't let the fears hold them back from their future success and two just think of all the things they could do or all like the impact they could have if they make that change and if they don't make that change just look at what they're not doing and like look at what they can do so it's basically just think of the other people that you're gonna affect like it's not only about yourself like try to think of other people who you can help and make their lives better so just don't let your fears hold you back and think of the other people you can help with your message so that's my advice to a young person who's afraid to take action thank you so much justin and moses did you have any one bit of advice for a young person like yourself and um, yes believe in yourself I think that is uh, a wonderful way of ending it, simple and effective. Thank you, Moses. That was wonderful. And thank you to all of you sincerely. It's been just pure inspiration to get uh, so many insights from you across the world about some of the incredible projects you're working on. Uh, I invite all of you watching and in the call to uh, head over as well now to the Ashoka Young Changemakers panel, uh, where we'll be hearing from uh, several young changemakers making some real impact in their local communities. So you can just click the session below um, on the platform to be able to discover that. And thank you for all of you watching and uh, have a wonderful rest of the festival. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. thank you to all of you.